Okay, so back again. Part two of uh, just talking about flavours. Um, so let's just talk now um, in more simple terms about the types and categories of the flavours. So you have confectionery flavours, which would be fruity, creamy, um, and then you have savoury flavours, which would be meaty, livery, and then you have fishy flavours, which is obvious what they are, fishy. There's a subcategory within those, which would be confectionery aromatic spices, so spicy sweet confectionery, and then you would have spicy hot, so Indian curry type spices, that sort of thing. Um, so, I mean, for example, the Indian spice category one mixed with a savoury blend would be my chicken tikka uh, flavour, which has got six different essential oils in it, six blended with a very powerful natural chicken flavour. Very unusual, there's nothing like it on the market. Uh, a spicy one um, is a spicy flavour. Um, they're actually quite popular at the moment, but talking about those hot spices, I would say that 90% of every email I get from people asking about flavours, they want to put black pepper in their baits. And black pepper on its own is very good, or garlic. Um, those two are the most commonly used. So if you want to be different, really different, I wouldn't advise you to use one single essential oil. I would start to blend them. That becomes a little bit more difficult and I can help people with that if they email me. Uh, and there's two new products coming out soon, which is a hot Cajun spice oil, like a bay, bay, bayou spice. Um, and then there's another one called hot masala oil. Each of these have got between six and seven essential oils in them. So that would be a category of hot, spicy flavours. Uh, so going back to um, why do carp like some of these flavours more than others? Well, the only, the only way we find that out is by going fishing. Um, you, you, you simply cannot start up a, a company, for example, in, in the bait trade. And th this could be categorised as a bit of advice to people who are watching this or in the trade. And bring up a company or email a company and say, I'm looking for you know, this, this and this category of flavour because you might end up getting something that boils out of the bait. Um, or fish don't like it. And you know you can't just suddenly wake up, get a load of flavours, put them in the bait and expect them to work. It doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. Nearly everything will catch fish, but some will work better than others. And again, the only way you find out is by rod hours on the bank. So let's go back to some of the, the favourite flavours for carp. And the favourite flavours for carp, we all know, would be some of the creamy ones. Um, these will be linked to some of the early trials that um, were done in the late 70s. So there'll be some of the creamy flavours. Um, so the creamy ones that Jeff Kemp did, they were good. Um, Jeff did a lot of work on um, flavours in the early days, giving them out to people like me, uh, Kevin Maddox, one or two other people like that, and they tested them for Jeff. He was great. And, uh, well, that was a long time ago now. And, and obviously Rod Hutchinson, one or two others. Uh, it, I actually helped Rod uh, find Scopex. Um, it, was, uh, it was something that um, at the time I wasn't involved in the trade. And I did Rod a couple of flavours with, uh, with uh, finding out where he could get hold of stuff. And I put him onto a company down in South London called Perleron. And they made a wonderful flavour. I can't say what it exactly was called, but it had a code number. And I gave Rod that code number and he subsequently bought out that flavour which I had found and used and tested myself and he brought that out of Scopex. And I promised Rod that I would never divulge that information within his lifetime and, you know, great guy that he was, he uh, sadly passed away a few years ago and so uh, I've stuck to my promise. Um, I have brought out my own version and it's called Topex. So that's a little bit of a story but it Again, we all tested these baits. We tested and tested them. And one of the things that's interesting about a cream flavour is that it's got certain types of lactones or decalactones in it. So super concentrated, 10 times lactones, all sorts of different things which go together to get that taste for human food, which, um, and there was an early aroma ingredient that was used called diacetyl. 
um, which some people say is not allowed in bait anymore. It is, you can still put it in there, but some companies won't have it through their doors. So you just have to be careful um, about using ingredients you don't understand. And that would apply to anything that is perhaps sold on the internet without the proper backing of somebody with the experience to endorse it. So going back to the creamy flavors to finish off on those, um, when we first tested them, it was linked to milk proteins and people wanted to use creamy flavors because they thought they would be matching the fashionable base at the time, which was milk protein, which obviously we all know was a concept brought up by the great Fred Walton and the original milk protein theory, which was as way back as the early 70s. So then, then we started to test and use more things. And around about that time, I watched my mother making a Victoria sponge cake and uh, she put a flavour in called vanilla, which it goes into the butter icing and sometimes you can put it in the main ingredient. It gives that lovely distinctive taste of it or of it, Victoria sponge cake, which I love. And there's an ingredient that goes into vanilla called vanillin, and it's an aroma ingredient. Um, it's all classified as safe. We probably eat it quite regularly in ice cream, but you can buy certain versions of it in a blend in a flavour blend with milk and creamy lactones, which will make the most incredible flavour. We don't know why carp like these flavours, but they do. So you need to harmonise the flavour with the base mix. I'll come on to that in future videos. So ideally, if you want to have a profile of a milk protein, it would make sense to use something which is in harmony with the ingredients within the base mix. So creamy, vanilla-y, toffee, milky lactones, all those sorts of things, they would be categories of ingredients used by flavour companies to get that profile in creamy, caramelly, buttery type flavours. And I'm particularly keen on using those and they go into my milky one flavour, my cream caramel flavour, my dairy cream flavour and in quite high concentrations in TM1. So they represent a very important aspect of flavour design. Um, we move on to the fruit flavours, which I covered in the previous video, all the different um, aroma ingredients that are used in those. And you know, back in the, um, in the 80s, in the late 80s, um, so much effort was put into designing and making some of these fruit flavours. I'll tell you a quick story about how much effort was put in. As one company, a famous company called Bush Bo Callum, and they were based in Walthamstow, East London. And I was lucky enough to find the original salmon flavour from them. I gave that one to Rob too. And uh, that went on to be sold as pucker salmon. But that was me that found that. And they also had some other flavours, particularly some fruit ones. And they designed them by growing the fruit underneath glass jars, huge glass bell jars. And they captured all the aromas of the growing fruit. Then when the fruit was formed on the plant, they cut it up. They ground it up in a liquidizer and they copied with a gas chromatograph which measures the peaks and troughs of aroma ingredients in flavours, a gas chromatograph. Um, they measured all those volatiles, all those base notes, all those ingredients and they made a flavour from them. And I actually am still in contact and friendly with one of the guys that performed those experiments and did the design of those flavours. I've kept in contact with him for 35 years. So yes, I am obsessed, I do admit it. So we tried these and of course these incredibly complex, fantastic flavors are expensive, but they're really good. Um, fortunately, I was able to afford to buy them and invest in them. And uh, those are the ones I use in a lot of my flavors. That, so the technology that goes into these means that the cost is higher but the quality is better, so you need less of them in the bait. And we'll just finish this one off. I've been asked um, by lots of people since I started doing these clips, which was only in October 2020, um, started doing these clips, the emails started coming through. I've thoroughly enjoyed doing them, but lots of people have said, oh, John, you know, instead of selling or you know these these hundred ml bottles of flavor which are quite expensive 
Sorry guys, they are expensive, but this will make an awful lot of bait. One bottle of my flavour can make sometimes 150 kilos of bait. That's how strong it is. So what I've decided to do is these little beauties here, uh, little eight mil bottles. I'm bringing these out in the next few days. They'll be on the website and it's the 14 strongest flavours that I do. So plum TM1, milky one, all those ones, chicken ticker, roast chicken, all those ones. You can buy them in a mix and match, like pick and mix. So you can buy one of these. So for example, if you bought the plum one, here it is, plum. There's enough in there for four to five kilos of bait. So if you want to try out my flavours, you needn't invest in a big bottle, 16, 17, 18 pounds, you can buy an eight mil one. And this will be on offer for this year so that people have a good opportunity to trial uh, these flavours out. Also, um, because I'm going to keep banging on about flavour levels and not making your bait too strong, a high attract bait does not need to contain a high level of flavour, but it does need to contain the right level of flavour. And the only way you're going to find out that it's the right level of flavour is by making the bait yourself, being in control, using the right ingredients and taking notes and measuring how many fish you catch on a given recipe. So on the website, I'm selling three of these little one mil syringes. They're in the flavour section so that people can accurately measure, it fits in the top, parts of one mil with these. I know I've mentioned it before, but it's really important. So I think that's a bit of a blast on flavours, a bit of a, um, you know, a lot to take in, shall we say. Um, but it's fairly obvious it's my passion. I will continue to help all those that email me and thank you very much for, uh, for doing so. Um, and William behind the camera, he's told me that I have to uh, um, do something uh, at the end of this video to make sure that people, um, apparently it's the thing to do. So please like what I say, please comment on it and please subscribe. And then other people will get to share in all this information that's pouring out of my head and I'm thoroughly enjoying every minute of it. See you later.